is it that everyone always seems to underestimate Take-Two Interactive Software? Here's a company that is perhaps the best video game developer around, but it never seems to get enough credit from Wall Street. Somehow, virtually every time it reports, Take-Two blows away the estimates. Did it just again yesterday. I think investors underestimate this company because they still see it as nothing more than the creator of Grand Theft Auto, admittedly the most successful video game franchise ever. But that leads Wall Street to severely misjudge Take-Two whenever they don't have a new iteration of Grand Theft Auto coming out soon. Thing is, that's, that's ridiculous. Take-Two is an incredibly well-run company with a huge library of strong franchises, Red Dead, Max Payne, Borderlands, Bioshock, Civilization, Evolve, and a ton of great sports titles like MLB uh, 2K, NBA 2K, we're going to talk about that, keep helping the bottom line even when there is no new iteration of Grand Theft. So I was not surprised yesterday when Take-Two reported an incredibly strong quarter, beating the estimates by an extraordinary 22 cents, and increased its buyback authorization to 10 million shares, 12% of the company's share count, by the way. No wonder the stock rocketed more than 18% yesterday. Honestly, given the Take-Two pullback about buck today, and it's around three bucks off its January highs. I still think this thing is a bargain. Don't take it from me. Let's check in with Strauss Zelnick. He's the chairman and CEO of Take-Two Interactive Software. Hear more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Zelnick, welcome back to Man Money. Good to see you, Strauss. Nice to see you, Jim. Have a seat. Thanks for right, having me. Great line in your, let's start, great line in your conference call yesterday. People ask, look, what's it's changed? And you say, every year since 2007, the company as a whole has launched at least one new significant intellectual property. Today, we have 10 titles that have each sold over 5 million units for individual lease and over 40 titles that have sold 1 million units. That's pretty amazing and I think really industry leading. And I think that that's where we really got to begin, because this was the quarter where you basically said, listen, September 2013 was was when last G- uh, GTA 5, you actually told people next year may not be a big up year. And the stock still rallied magnificently. Is this the beginning of when people get it? I hope so. I mean, I think we're beginning to demonstrate with the, the year that we just guided to this, the, the fiscal year we're in now, that we are a solidly profitable company with a diverse lineup. And Not every year will be gently upward sloping, but we do have great releases and a great new title coming up with Battleborn, which we have high hopes for. Right. Now, where would you put Battleborn? I know you're always very conservative, yet Evolve, that's now a tentpole. I think it's It looks like it, yeah. Would Battleborn be a tentpole? We certainly hope so. It comes to us from Gearbox Software, the people who brought us Borderlands. The gameplay is great. It's going to be featured at E3. You know, I, I never like to overpromote before I know, it happens. Important. Naturally, we feel good about it. But what I will tell you is we're putting all our muscle behind it. Okay, and I know you do have considerable muscle and huge, huge cal. It's just something that I've been thinking about. Uh, we've talked often about how you had a billion-dollar release. David Faber and I were talking about this morning. This, that no movie has ever done that. Uh, and I've always said, well, listen, maybe the comparison is Disney. Is the comparison maybe more Jordan sneakers and Nike? He retired years ago. Did <laughs> $2.5 billion last year. Yeah, it's a good point. I, we like to believe that we're building permanent franchises, franchises that we can bring back to market over and over again. And uh, if, we can, if we can build multiple James Bonds of the interactive entertainment business, that's what we would like to do. That's one of the reasons that we rest our releases for a while. It's why we don't hit the market annually except for our sports titles. And it's the reason we, we're so focused on quality, that we don't put out anything until we think it's the very highest quality it can be. I've often heard you say that, but I thought it was interesting. And a guy who's got a neutral credit squeeze, he points out that there is increased cost discipline. I've not often associated that because I know Grand Theft Auto costs like $260 million, but this is a new phrase that I'm hearing from these analysts, cost discipline. Well, we've, we've always had a strategy of being the most efficient as well as the most creative and innovative. And what we do does cost a lot of money, but we are trying to be very, very disciplined in what we do, and I think we have made some progress. All right, uh, I want to talk about Tencent and NBA 2K. NBA is really... Uh, Incredible renaissance in this country. I mean, people are talking about last night's game, Golden State, where everybody's up really late. We all checked it out. China, where are they with NBA? Is it just, is it, because it's always been big, but is it about to take a step function? Well, it's the number one PC online sports title in China. Um, Tencent's been a great partner. I think we have something like 24 million registered users. It's massive, and it's generating revenue and profits for us every month. So and showing no signs of abating. So this is a, a great piece of business for us. It worked out one of those few things that worked out exactly as planned. And uh, it's just the beginning in China. We have civilization um, online coming as well from partners in Korea. And we have other titles that we're working on in, in Asia. So the Asian market an area that we really just entered in a big way a few years ago yes. is turning out to be a big contributor for our company. Uh, other titles you're working on in Asia, even though those they would be Asia-specific and not in America? They're starting. I mean, we're starting in Asia because these are free-to-play titles. It's a different business model. Uh, could we bring them uh, to the rest of the world? We have that option, but for now, it's Asia-focused. Are you surprised when we watch TV now we almost expect to see a commercial for a video game that we would have thought was a movie? 
I'm not surprised because I think in, in, unless you've really grown up in video games, I'm not sure one can fully appreciate their cinematic quality now. But what we do now is the cutting edge of entertainment. That's a great way to look at it. I hadn't thought about that because I know that when Grand Theft Auto first came out, it was kind of clunky, what, 1997? It's been out forever. That's why I thought about the Jordan. And it, it is. It's, cinema, it's, it's cinematography now. Oh, it's it? amazing. I, when you watch... When I, when I watch someone else play Red Dead, right. I feel like I am in the middle of a Western. I mean, you hear the crickets chirping, you feel the sand, you, you think you're right there. You know, watching the tumbleweed flow and watching, you know, people interact. All right, well, you think you're right there. I wanted to talk to you about Brian Chrysanich. He's the CEO of Intel. He's a big gamer, by the way. And he made me sit down and have my face dimensional so that I could be a player in the game. Is that something that you think could help sales? Well, that's why I wanted to talk to you about, Jim. You know, serious? joining us and uh, well, no, being I'm one saying of our like characters. The, I play you, and it's yeah, my face exactly. on the game versus you. Do you see that happening, or is that just vanity? Oh, oh no, we're doing it You're in doing NBA it. now. You can scan your face and be in the NBA title now. It's I can't. Uh, Stefan Curry, you can put me on Stefan Curry? You can do it right now. Lethal? It's a little bit clunky, which makes it sort of amusing. It's not A-plus yet, but it's very, very good. Very is, good. It, is it additive, or is it just candy? Uh, it's uh, somewhere between the two. <laughs> well, I'll take additive any day of the week, even just somewhere between the two. That's Strauss Zelnick, the chairman CEO of Take-Two Interactive, demonstrating this quarter that it's not a hit-driven industry as much as it is a catalog that seems to last forever. Mad Money's back here for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.